Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome to another St Christopher's Art for All video and I've got a couple of activities to show you today. One is something that I've shared with uh, some of the groups that I work with. Another one is something that I'm going to share here with you today and make it as I go. So you might be able to see my hands moving so I will um, be able to focus in on my hands and show you exactly what I do and then with the other activity which I'll do first I'll just be able to show you um, yeah I'll just be able to show you what the idea is so the first idea is called and I'll pick it up just here it's called a page full of colour and this is what I mean so the idea is to take one colour and then look for objects around your home that match this colour. So you might choose blue and around, and I, I also um, did objects that weren't necessarily in my house, but I could, anything I could think of. So I thought of a blue bird, uh, forget-me-nots, a blue butterfly, blue hair, which is featured before, uh, blue skies, blue pair of jeans. Um, put that down there, turn it that way. And then I also thought um, of orange and I went round my home and I thought these were all actually all things that are in my house. Um, so I thought of a sofa, um, I thought of an album cover, there was a gerbera that was part of a bunch of flowers, it's since now died, um, but it was there. A penguin classic, um, my hammer, I took a little bit of liberty there because there's quite a bit of blue in it, a Sainsbury's bag. Uh, not, no adverts for Sainsbury's here, just happened to be in the house. Um, orange curtains, bouquet of flowers, and a chair that is kind of a burnt orange. I've made it a little bit more orange. But you could just go through and look at colours that are around your home and just see, um, just see what, what, what there might be available to draw. And you can draw them out. You could, you, you could just just do black and white, just do monochrome, just use pencil, um, you could use biro, you could um, actually find images in newspapers of things that correspond to things around your house or images in newspapers that correspond to the colour that you've chosen. You could also um, just take photographs and make a photo montage of all of these things that are a specific colour and you can work your way through all the different colours of the rainbow. It's a bit like I Spy actually you have perhaps that drawing element or you have that photographic element and you have a record of all the things you think of and if there are things outside your home you might think red um, it might be a post box might be a london bus might be um thinking of more things that are red taking a bit of a liberty the um london underground signs um maybe the uniforms of the soldiers that stand outside buckingham palace um I'm just thinking very London centric things here. It could be a red pepper you might have in your fridge, like really kind of anything that you can think of that could just fill a page with colour and you can work through loads and loads of different colours. And if you've got some colouring pencils or felt tips, it's a great time to use them for paints equally. So the other uh, art activity I'm going to show you today is to do with something I've featured before um, and something we've all talked a lot about, particularly at the start of lockdown. So this is using toilet paper as art. So I've used a toilet roll before, the cardboard bit. This is actually about using toilet paper as art. And you can also use, if you don't want to use toilet paper, you can use kitchen paper. You could use, this works particularly well with coffee filters. Um, so if you have any of those and you're willing to sacrifice them for art, this works particularly well. And what you'll need with this, you probably need some felt tips or you can actually use paint, watercolour paints work well. Or if you have other things that can be diluted down to make pigments, then this will work as well. But I'll show you um, what the plan is. So the plan is to make butterflies. Um, and here's one I made earlier. So I might hold it up to the camera, turn it around a bit. So this, is just a piece of toilet paper um, that I folded into a little 
bow and then I added some felt tips and I first of all tried it out with um with the with the wetting the toilet paper that actually made it break down a bit I think with a coffee filter it might be better to add a bit of water and that might help it the pigment disperse a bit but with this I found I didn't really need to um I just used um the felt tip and quite a wide felt tip is better maybe if you have the double-ended felt tips maybe the wider end is actually quite good and um, because it will just sort of bleed out and kind of expand and then I also use some watercolour paints as well and they worked really well and I just kind of washed them on so I'll show you exactly how I did it and um, what you're going to need for this is you'll need a rough piece of paper I've got my piece of paper I'm actually going to use my final piece here but you'll need another piece of paper which to do this on so that you don't get watercolour as we've seen here on um, your final piece. So I'm just going to take my little piece of toilet paper and pinch it in the middle. I'm going to fold it round and give it a good squeeze in the middle and then I'm going to flatten it down like that and I'm going to go for really different colours than those that I went for last time. So this time Bit of clattering. I am going to go for red at the tip. So I'm going to add a bit here, and you might need to just hold hold the felt tip down so you can see. And you just hold it there for a couple of seconds, and then the uh, the pigment just bleeds across the tissue paper. So I'm going to do that. So for the finer detail, I think I'll use the felt tip. And then for the bigger washes of colour, I think I'll probably use the watercolours. So I'm going to have, um, I might have another spot here. So just do a spot here and a spot here. I'm trying to make them, it's going to be a matching butterfly. <laughs> it's going to be uh, quite, um, it's quite uh, coordinated. Maybe that's the word I want. Um, and where the paper's thinner, it bleeds out even more. So yeah, this is why you definitely need the piece of paper underneath. So I'll add another spot down here. And where the paper's thicker, you can actually do a bit more kind of colouring, colouring. Where the paper's thinner, you might need to be a little bit more delicate. Uh, okay, and now I'm going to get on to the good stuff. I'm going to add in some watercolour. So this should be fairly dramatic. Um, so add this in, then the brush off a bit. I've got some, I've just got a jam jar full of water um, and my watercolour paints just off screen. And I'm going to do this. And you can see that this really, this really kind of expands to fill paper so I'm gonna add this and if you're using coffee filters once these have dried these can actually be put up on windows so if you've done any rainbows in your windows for the NHS adding these in as well it almost creates a stained glass effect so that can be actually really effective and quite nice you could probably do it with these as well but they're just that little bit more fragile than a coffee filter that's quite robust. Um, and uh, yeah, so after that, I'm going to add a bit of yellow. So I'm going to add yellow down here and I haven't really got an idea of the design that I'm going to use I'm just going to just going to add in the paint just wherever I want and just paint it on and some of it's going to the other colours and it doesn't it isn't particularly realistic I've never seen 
a, a tricolour butterfly. <laughs> it looks a bit like a, some kind of a nation's flag. Um, but I'm just going to add it in and just see what happens. And I will, I'm going to layer colours as well. I'm also going to wipe my hand because I've just got, once again, watercolour on my hand. Um, so now I'm going to add a bit more of a lighter orange in the middle. So maybe this is a bit of a sunset butterfly. Maybe it's a Maybe it's gone somewhere nice on holiday and it's uh, taken on the colours of the sunset. So there we go, adding a bit more. And I'm just actually dropping the paint on now because it will just expand out and expand out. And the paper will become more and more delicate as it becomes saturated with colour. So yeah, now it's all kind of linking up and leading in together a little bit. Oh, here we go. And yeah, a, li a little bit of paint goes a very long way with this. So it's quite, um, it's quite nice to, um, the sunset. I'm actually going to add a little bit going up to where the yellow is and going up to where the red is. So yeah, so we've got that. So now I'm going to actually go back in and see how this works. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work, but I'm going to add in um, some of some of my felt tips and see if this is this is doable. So I'm going to add in some purple. Ah, and that's actually working quite well. So I'm going to add in spots. So I think this might be the lesser spotted butterfly. Um, and I might do kind of a pattern up here. So it's got dots on the edges of its wings. The other one was a bit more abstract and this one's going to be a bit more, yeah, a bit more flat patterned. So I'm going to do Another layer of dots and add a few more here, just holding the pen down and adding in the dots. And I'm going to add, give it a dark body in the middle here so it looks a bit more like a butterfly. You can add in antennae if you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got kind of starting to starting to get there and with the yellow, oops, yellow I might add a, um, a lighter colour or lighter pinks down the bottom because they'll show up on the yellow whereas they might not show up on um, on the red or the orange so I'm yeah this this poor old butterfly has got a it's a polka dot butterfly. So I've created a new species. And uh, you might see, yeah, it does show up a little bit actually on the orange. I was being maybe being a bit hasty and saying that it wouldn't show up. So. And I'm just holding the pen down and just dotting. So yeah, um, don't we want to do any more? I might add, might add a little bit of purple just because I think that might just give it, give it the pop I'm looking for. So I think it might be nice to kind of um, blend out from there then. Ooh, that's, that's quite dramatic. Uh, yeah, so a bit of purple. trying to keep it even as much as I can and then I'm going to add a bit of shading in there so it kind of looks like where the two wings would be so it's going to bleed out but I'm okay with that okay and I think I'm going to leave it there I would say this is a less is more approach but I've covered it in dots and polka dots and I will now hold it up so you can see it a bit better there we go that's coming through so 
not sure. Oh, so it's quite it's quite different to the other one. So now what I'm going to do is I will bring two butterflies together. And actually this one, this one is almost dry. So I'm going to lay that one there. Then I'm going to remove this one very delicately. And actually, I think, draw that, I might turn this one the other way up. I think I quite like it, kind of being on the other way. And yeah, and I'll turn that one that way, I think. And I might move, and actually, the, uh, the pattern where the butterfly was, I actually quite like that as well. So I think what I might do is actually cut that out and put that on there as well. Just add it to the um, add it to the final piece and kind of have almost like this ghost of a butterfly. It's, um, it's part of the part of the image. So yeah, I quite. Yeah. <laughs> I almost like it better than the actual butterfly. No, no that's the actual butterfly. But, um, yeah, I think sometimes the the bits of art that happen when we're not expecting them. The accidents they can be the most sometimes the most visually appealing things and uh, I think often we kind of think that um, we really want our art to look like what's like what we'll, what we wanted in our heads and that becomes kind of oh it doesn't look like what I what I hoped but actually it was kind of I think there's a bit of a bit of beauty in the, in the chance and in the um and in the, just the happening of things and now i'm going to get a bit ambitious and i have these um which you can see these uh these are temporary tattoos so you may well not have these at home um but if you do maybe you have grandchildren maybe you might have some at home i don't I don't know. I had these left over from a festival from a couple of years ago and um, these are things that you'd normally put on your skin but I'm actually going to use them, test them out. I haven't tested this before which is probably not a great idea but I'm going to test them out and see if I can use them on this piece of artwork. So first of all how you use these is you, um, so you wet the paper so I'm going to use my, my paintbrush to wet the paper And my paint water is a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, a little bit coloured, which maybe isn't ideal. I'm going to wet this side as well. And I'm going to place this here. So I'm going to then going to press it on. I think I might have some of the colour from the from the paint water come off onto it, which I'm okay with. I think that's uh, just, just the way the cookie crumbles, I think. Um, and what I should probably do... Ooh, actually. Ooh, actually, no, I'm going to leave that for a moment. I'll do the other ones and then I'll, I'll take that off. So I've got another one as well. So I'm kind of almost making like a little forest down at the bottom here. And uh, yeah, so adding in more water, some little drops of water falling, but that's, that's fine. And Yeah, okay, I've pressed that down. I'm gonna add in a bit more water just to make sure it's absolutely stuck. Go and and I might try again now taking this one off. Okay, yeah, there we go. So now we've got this little 
little gold fern that has stuck onto the paper and has become part of the image. So I'm going to do the same. I'm actually just going to dip, <laughs> dip this one. I just dipped it into the um, into the water because I'm lazy <laughs> and um, it seemed seemed to work okay. So I'm just going to press it down. And should have stuck by now. Okay. And then I've also got my trim this one down. I've got a tiny, tiny little diamond. Which I'm going to trim down even more. And I don't know why this hasn't worked. I haven't peeled the plastic off. So, ah, there we go. Yeah. And place that on there. And this also, I've not taken the plastic off. So, yeah. Uh, the of this story is make sure you're actually doing things correctly. But it's me. So, worries. And actually, now I can see bit more easily where I want these to go. So I'm going to stick that on and wait a minute. Then I'll take the plastic off in just a moment. So this is a bit more now has the plastic removed. So that can go there and in just a minute I think this should be nearly ready just take a little zoom in so I will oops I need to add a bit more water And that one crumbled a little bit, that's okay. I'll just stretch it out a tiny bit. And then yeah. So here we are. I'll tilt this a little bit, tilt it around so you can see. That will be Great, but then we'll zoom in a bit to the butterflies. Yeah. So, what I'll do now is just end this recording. And I will show you, tilt it this way, because you might be able to see a little bit better, show you the final piece. So, oops, here we go. So, that is the final piece. I might tilt it up a little bit, shouldn't fall. Yeah, so, Things that are pretty simple to do at home with materials that you'll have around the house and you can use any kind of felt tips. You like I used, I was using Sharpies and I think actually just ordinary felt tips would be much better. They were a little bit, they didn't kind of loom quite as much as I would have, I would have liked. Um, but felt tips, watercolours, toilet paper, and then yeah, using the, the accidental images that come from that as well and just seeing having a play seeing what works but thank you very much for joining me today and um, i'll look forward to seeing you all in the future and if you have any requests of art techniques you'd like to learn or anything you'd like me to make that you might like to be displayed in st christopher's please um 
email the wellbeing online team at St Christopher's and uh, we'll happily take your call and take on your suggestions and we'd love to hear from you. So thank you very much and uh, have a good week. Bye bye.